If there's one app that's been an unsung hero in my YouTube journey, it's got to be Frame.io. It's no secret I work with an editor to help get these videos out as consistently as I do, and to make the process somewhat similar to as being you know, physically stood next to one another by a computer and frame.io is the closest thing that I've found to help replicate this. I've been using this app for about five years now with another YouTube channel that I freelance for and for my own. And it just so happens that frame.io have recently announced maybe one of their biggest app updates so far with their version four. And it's gotten me super excited about the future of video collaboration and how much more efficient this seems to be getting every single year because Ultimately, if we can't be working in offices together side by side, then having a website that allows creatives and freelancers to leave comments and different versions of their projects in a super fun and intuitive workspace, this is probably the next best thing until we can all be sat with our Apple Vision Pro VR headsets collaborating together that way. So let's take a look at what's coming up in this new version of Frame.io and how it compares to the current version that I spend quite a lot of my time in on the daily. The biggest change in version four is how all the windows are really dynamic and move around. So in this example here, you can see that they're resizing all the thumbnails, even to be able to put the video player at the same time as you can see comments and you can see the video viewer and you can see all your folders, which is really, really, really cool. Cause in the current version, I'll just show you mine. There's no resizing options except list and not list. And then if you want to go in, you know, you can click on it and then you click it and then, then it plays. So, so that's all you can really do. There's not much else you can mess around with. So just to have an interface that is a bit more flexible and you can rescale and remove everything to whatever your preference is, that is awesome. That is really, really cool. It just means that you can hop around different areas of the app more efficiently and with less going deep into folders and having to back all the way back out of that folder. Just makes more sense really. So it's a really cool update that they've done. Um, redesigned across web and iOS to be fast, fluid and visually stunning. Looks like that definitely. And they've also added, this is a really cool feature where they've added kind of a lot more metadata. So you can essentially, instead of just having as here, you have your video here and then there's no information about what it is. Like the only info that I currently have here is that, you know, this is the version two. You can scrub through it, which is nice. See how long it is. You can also give it a status so we can say approved and that shows up, but that's it. Like there's no other organization other than if we want to put it into folders, like here, I have a music video folder with um, different versions of that, but that's pretty much it. There's nothing else you can do. So the fact that they're making a version that has loads of keywords about, you know, what is the project, some notes on the status, a rating thing, if you want to do that, it just means that we have a lot more flexibility in terms of how we can organize all of the edits and versions and kind of things that we're working on to be able to organize it way better and to give us less headaches and try to find previous versions and be like, where is it? I don't know where it is. Cause yeah, when you start working with it in a big capacity where you have terabytes of storage on, like um, this is the YouTube channel that I freelance for, there's so much going on and we have so many versions and then we have folders and folders. And then yeah, the only way to get back is to navigate via, via these things, which is okay, but I'm glad that they've actually made it nicer for, for us. And they've done loads of really, you know, very simple things to make it nicer. It shows you how many people you've shared it to, who those people are, when they last viewed it. Um, you can make really cool, like custom share portfolio. So you can have a whole multiple versions and then share that with a client and then they can see all the versions and it's nicely organized. It looks like a website basically, but <laughs> we're, uh, in a way that you can actually play it and leave feedback. The actual viewer is the thing I'm the most excited about because you know, this frame.io is all about leaving comments. That's the whole point of it. So just the fact that they're a lot nicer to scrub through to leave comments to find sections of the time code that you want to leave feedback on for your editor or for your client. It's so cool, especially this uh, feature where you can leave anchored pins on uh, the video itself to say like, hey, this part, let's sort the grade out here. Let's make it less bright. And the big thing for me, honestly, like this is, I think I even emailed Frame asking for this. You can leave attachments to a comment. Oh my God, like this is, Genuinely, like it took them so long to add this that I was starting to think, do they even care about the users anymore? Because there's so many times when I want to reference with my editor, like, hey, can you add this overlay here? And then I have to like copy and paste the name of that overlay versus I could just be like, hey, can we use this overlay? And then drag it in and they're like, oh, you've given me the overlay. There's no confusion here. So yeah, the fact that you can actually embed images, files. I think, I guess you could embed video files as well because here there's a JPEG file, there's a, a Google Sheets file. So I guess you can, 
embed anything. I don't know if, I don't know if that is true or not, but you can, you can add anything, I hope. So yeah, that's like the biggest change for me <laughs> is being able to actually give my YouTube editor way more context in terms of what we actually want to be overlaying at this part of the edit. And again, making it feel more like he's here, stood next to me and I'm saying, hey, let's put an overlay there. And he's saying, yeah, good idea, Adam. Best YouTuber ever. You always come up with the good ideas. Book upload with more visibility. So I, I, yeah, this I guess is just nicer UI to be able to upload stuff at the same time. You've always been able to upload multiple stuff at the same time, but they've just made the whole UI feel a lot nicer and I guess give you some more flexibility that you can be uploading and then bounce across the different windows and still see what the progress is of the files that are being uploaded. And then the mobile app. There are definitely some times where I'm out and about doing stuff and then my editor gives me an edit and then I have time to check it because I'm like on public transport and it just looks like they've made the, the app a lot nicer, very similar kind of vibe with how you can navigate, how you can search for stuff, etc etc. I, I honestly, I like, I just feel like technically everything that this update has, you could work around in some way. Like frame.io was not broken by any means. Like I've been using it for so long, but there was just some little things that other websites were upgrading and, and like how it would make me feel to use it. And it just started to feel a bit old and kind of like, why don't they just make this a bit more nice to use? So these updates, as good as they are, are not, they're not game changers necessarily, or maybe they will be when I when I use it because it's currently in beta and I don't have access to the beta, I'm afraid. Or they might not give it me because I like uh, DaVinci Resolve and uh, Adobe own frame now. Don't know how I feel about that. But yeah, like just being able to make the software feel nice and using it more because of that is for me a thing that just makes me feel like, oh, these guys care about the users. They care about making us feel nice when we use the software. They care, they care about making, you know, like we're investing money into this every month with a subscription. So we're going to make it as nice uh, and lovely for you to use. So I have to give props to Frame for actually doing that and listening to the feedback and making it happen to make a nice, a nice update coming up. And yeah, they've done stuff like making the search better. That was always annoying. Like I did didn't think the search was particularly great. So it looks like that is that is changing now. And that's pretty much it really. It's mainly a lot of UI changes, making stuff nicer. The thing that I really hope they'll do, I will, I will show you. I'll show you a sneak peek of the last video that I put out. This is usually how it goes with me leaving comments from my editor. One thing that I really hope they're gonna change, and I don't know if I've seen this exactly, is if I wanna leave comments over a certain period of time, a lot of times I would just write, cut after I say skyscraper. That's not how you spell scraper, is it? Skyscraper, it's definitely wrong, whatever. And then cut back in here. There is actually a way in frame to be like, cut here, and then you can drag this out. I personally have found that it's not that useful because there's no audio scrubbing. I want to hear when I finish saying a sentence, but I can't because there's no audio scrubbing. So I hope they add audio scrubbing because I would use this a lot more because I think it's nicer to be able to tell an editor like cut here and then they have this line section to say, hey, okay, Adam wants me to cut from this time code to this time code. But I don't normally use it just because the UI is kind of annoying to use it because of the lack of audio scrubbing. So I really hope that the version four actually makes me able to use this time frame time code thing because that would be a bit more efficient for my workflow. And yeah, that is pretty much it. This wasn't like the biggest video ever. I wish I had a, ver I wish I was given access to the actual software to be able to use it. But I've asked them, I've asked Frame, hey, give me access to the beta they haven't given me yet. But this is just kind of showing you guys that maybe if you've never if you've never heard of frame before uh, this is definitely a good time to be aware of it and to give it a try there is a free version of frame that you can have and then there's paid versions and stuff but i think you should definitely give it a try because if you've ever wanted to if you ever hired an editor or if you ever hired a collaborator to help you how are you going to give them feedback how are you actually going to be able to communicate with them to explain what you want especially if it's a video uh, frame is the best way to do that. Like I remember before I used frame, I was literally writing in a Google doc, like, oh, at 14, da, 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 do this, do that. And it's such a pain in the ass versus you can just upload the video to frame. And also, yeah, frame integrates with editing software. So DaVinci, Final Cut, Premiere, there's different ways that you can see the frame version comments on your actual edit and timeline, which is unbelievably helpful when you're collaborating with a client or if you're the freelancer, or if you're the client knowing that like, you can write a time code and then this editor is gonna see it go boop and he's gonna see that comment on their timeline. So goddamn cool. It's like future of editing is amazing. So yeah, be aware of that frame is gonna get better. Make it account if you want to just to get to grips with, does this workflow even make sense for you? And is it gonna help you? And then when version four rolls out along to every single uh, user, then you're gonna get the best experience possible. And you're gonna love collaborating with people. You're gonna be a happy creator. If you're curious about what my 
my personal rankings are for the best camera brands of all time, you check out this video right here. And hit that subscribe button, because if you do, I'm going to leave a really lovely bit of feedback on your website. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.